Julia Moss here with Bridge Gotham. We just finished up the second and last day of the Kansas City Chiefs media availability. We got to talk to a lot of players, Bridge, and I want to ask you first, you know, what were your biggest takeaways from these two days? Oh, so awesome to be here uh, at Lake Las Vegas uh, at the Kansas City Chiefs media availability. Heard from head coach Andy Reid both days and, you know, just hearing from him, his team, they're treating it like a normal week. They understand the significance of it, but they're going through the motions. They're treating it like they normally would because they've been here before. They understand what it takes to win the big game. They did it last year against the Eagles. They did it a couple, few years ago against the San Francisco 49ers, in fact. So Andy Reid feeling very confident. I think some of the players we spoke with as well, I mean, we heard from Mahomes, we heard from Kelsey, the big names. We, you know, we had a chance to talk to some players. We all talked to Isaiah Pacheco, who talked about coming out as a seventh rounder last year, really making a name for himself. And how about Harrison Bucker, who kicked the game-winning field goal in last year's Super Bowl? Had a chance to talk to him and how he's feeling super locked in and says he's focused, he can trust himself to make that big game-winning field goal. So just really awesome to be here and hearing from so many different players. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing that struck me, too, is the balance between being appreciative of the Super Bowl win last season, but also knowing that that is last season and it's now time to focus on this Super Bowl. And that was kind of the message from a lot of the players we spoke to. I think another aspect that makes the Kansas City Chiefs so fun is the, just the the specific storylines that are with each player. We talked to talk to Isaiah Pacheco, as you mentioned, and seventh round draft pick just a couple years ago, not even. And, you know, I asked what his advice would be for players who get drafted in later, later rounds. And his perspective, I think, is really important and wider. If you zoom out a little bit, it really encapsulates the team. It's everyone suits up the same uniform. They all lace up the same cleats. And I think that really spoke to just the overall vibe of the team. I was wondering, is there any quote from any player that you heard that you got to speak to that really, you know, struck you in a certain way? Well, I mean, that's a hard question because so many <laughs> you heard a lot of great things. I mean, I guess if, to stay on the topic of Pacheco, I mean, he said something he learned in college, just, you know, being disciplined, eliminating those distractions. I think that does really help uh, when you're coming out as a lesser known player to show that you kind of have the work ethic uh, to do what it takes. But even with some other players, I had a chance to sit down with Richie James with uh, Brian Raybacks. Richie James spent a year with the Giants. Uh, last year so it was cool to sort of touch base with him we told him we, we were from Fordham and all of a sudden his eyes lit up you know he knows the New York area obviously so spent a year there so he talked about the differences of playing here in Kansas City compared to New York catching balls from Patrick Mahomes and you know Brian and I were laughing because what Richie said to us he was like I wish you guys could see some of the stuff Mahomes does in practice because it's even crazier than what he does during the game so getting those sound bites and getting that perspective and just being able to sit down and talk to the players it's just something really special that not a lot of people get to do. And staying on the topic of balance, the last thing I want to talk about here is the last consistency really has been the conversations about Taylor Swift and Travis That's Kelsey. Right. A lot of questions asked along this media day about that. And the answers to these questions are really mature and they strike me as that balance that we're talking about because they don't hide away from the questions. They're not passing on the questions, That's but right. they're, they're just straight up saying, you know, Taylor's a great person, but we're focusing on the game. So I was wondering, you know, what your overall takeaway is on that storyline and how the Chiefs are dealing with that. No, I echo that sentiment 100%. I think we definitely expected some questions to be going Travis's way on the topic of Taylor. And I, you said it perfectly. He fielded them well, but he didn't go too much into his personal life. He gave a really respectable media trained answer and you can tell it's a healthy relationship. And, you know, it was funny yesterday when somebody asked Travis about it, you know, he's like, I'm not up there in the suite. Like, you know, they're asking him, oh, about the different dances that Taylor's doing and her reactions up in the suite. He's like, I'm down there on the field. I'm just doing my job. I love that they're having fun up there. You know, the Travis is giving the right answers, but he's like, I'm not up there with her. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, it's funny to get those answers, but yes, that is certainly going to be the topic. And I imagine we're going to see plenty of her on Sunday. Well, two successful days at the Chiefs media day complete. We've got more coming with the 49ers with Chris Persiana and Brian Raybacks a little later, but that is going to do it for our coverage today. This has been a production of WFUV Sports.